Hello, I'm Glyn Faulkner, and um, in contrast to the other presenters this uh, this year, who are, who are all very much serious professionals, I'm um, I'm definitely in the fourth hobbyist category, um, and so I'm I'm here with a uh, um, I guess sort of a, a cautionary tale about um, uh, about how hobbies can take you to dark places. So um, uh, yeah, let's uh, right, let me just be unprofessional and try and rearrange my windows so that I can see my notes at the same time as my slides. Uh, okay, that's better. Um, okay, so. When we say uh, the the left hand, my my talk's entitled the uh, uh, the uh, the left hand path. So what do we mean when we say the left hand path? Well, it's a term from Western esotericism, uh, usually contrasted with the right hand path, um, which would be magic used for good or guided by a moral compass, by a set of ethics. Uh, whereas the left hand path is magic used for evil or without uh, consideration of morality. Uh, so how does this how does this apply? How would this apply to fourth? Uh, well, I would. Um, the definition I'm working with here is the right-hand path is using fourth as the powerful tool it is for solving real-world problems with speed and efficiency, whereas uh, um, the left-hand path, which I've been walking, is writing lots and lots of fourth interpreters and uh, um, and. Um, uh, and yeah, just not really doing anything productive with the language. Um, so I'm not, you know, I, I want to make a clear contrast between, you know, doing serious research by developing new, um, uh, new fourth interpreters and new variations of the language to, to test out interesting, uh, interesting ideas. Uh, that's not what I've been doing. Um, I've been, well, as you'll see, uh, my, my implementing fourth got a little out of control. Um, but, um, but yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, it all started innocently enough. Uh, when I was writing my master's thesis, um, uh, I, was, I was doing uh, looking at speculative evaluation of functional languages. And along the way, I discovered Manfred von Thun's Joy concatenative programming language, uh, which many of you will be familiar with Factor. Uh, I, I believe Joy was the original implementation, uh, the, the original inspiration for Factor. Um, and um, uh, Joy is a language that, uh, it's a functional language, but whereas functional languages like Haskell and uh, OCaml, which you may be more familiar with, uh, F sharp, are functional languages where the basic operation, adjacency denotes function application. Uh, in Joy, and in fact, uh, adjacency denotes function composition. Um, so you end up with a reverse Polish style notation. Um, you would read the, this uh, calculator application on the screen in much the same way as you'd read um, uh, as you'd read a fourth program. Um, the square brackets are, I believe, the term quotations has started to become used in fourth for in anonymous functions. Uh, basically, that that uh, term quotations originates from from joy. Um, uh, anyway, I was I wanted to I was learning Haskell at the time, uh, and I wanted to write a parser and a, an interpreter for a language in Haskell. So um, pretty much arbitrarily, uh, I, I created a language called Funeral. Um, which uh, is a slightly unfortunate name, uh, but um, this is in Polish notation, not reverse Polish. Uh, so um, uh, I, I think we have at least one APL fan in the audience, uh, so they'll be familiar with the idea of reading programs backwards, uh, which is very much what you have to do here. So down at the bottom, we have a definition for essentially minus rot uh, by another name, um, which um, 
uh, Berry takes the top of the the top item off the stack and buries it under the next two items. So um, it would read uh, when you run minus rot, it will take the the next thing after it in the uh, in the program stream, and uh, the two it will interpret that as where where in the stack to put the uh, the top item. Uh, so essentially, Polish notation, you have to read the whole thing backwards. Um, the, uh, uh, yeah, I, I was, actually, it's, it's been a long time since I looked at Funeral, and I was pleasantly surprised at, at how readable it actually is um, after all this time. Um, but I, more surprisingly, at the time, it actually turned out to be useful. Um, so I, uh, my first implementation of a fourth like language uh, was, uh, was funeral and uh, I used it in a work project. I was working at a UK university at the time and needed to produce some rather complex chunks of HTML uh, which had some very ugly embedded um, proprietary markup for a, a query language that was used by our student record system. Um, and as you can see from like the, the second line of this slide, uh, that, that line is a program that will generate a, a reasonable looking HTML page, obviously with no head in this particular case, but um, it's readable, it's concise, and you have a Turing complete language in which to in which to implement logic. So I ended up using this in that project, and it, I think it, it made my life significantly easier for the for the kind of HTML generation with custom tags that I was doing. Um, Uh, yeah, from there, I the next step, my my kind of next uh, um, step into the uh, into the abyss was Richard Jones's Jonesforth, which really Jonesforth, which really impressed me with its simplicity and elegance. Um, and so I wrote my own fourth like first first properly fourth like language called Cantilever. Um, which was a uh, um, it was a fairly standard uh, indirect threaded fourth um, written in GNU assembler. Uh, it was also a, a nice way for me to learn uh, learn x86 assembly programming. I'd done some MIPS assembly back in the dim and distant past, but uh, I'd never really played with x86. Uh, and so this was a nice project to get my teeth into. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's a, a bit more familiar, but it still has obvious influences from the previous languages from Joy and Funeral, uh, including this these quotations. Um, uh, and you can see and, and the, the the unusual syntax comment syntax by fourth standards there. You can see. Um, uh, how how comments are implemented. It also has first class dates um, because while I was writing it, I found a rather elegant uh, date handling algorithm online and thought, okay, that would be fun to implement. And um, uh, and so yeah, dates as first class citizens and times as first class citizens as well. You can add them, you can um, subtract them. Um, yeah, you can you can do uh, and you, you'll get sensible results. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, a, a couple of other quirks I'll point out while I'm here. These uh, zero and one tells you the stack depths, and there's a bug whereby, well, not a bug, but depth is called from within a function that's nested one away from the interpreter. So the return stack de depth always shows as being one, and I never fixed that. Um, you also notice the semicolon at the end of the line here. Uh, there's a line line feed here, and no evaluation is done the se until uh, the semicolon is reached. Uh, that's because um, 
everything is compiled. There's no immediate, there's no immediate execution outside of definitions in cantilever. So the um, the semicolon is smart and notices that if you're compiling into the anonymous code buffer, then it knows to execute the code uh, and and then clear the uh, anonymous code buffer. And if you're compiling into uh, program memory, then it um, uh, it knows to keep the code and and uh, uh, the semicolon will switch you to anonymous code memory when you when you um, uh, when you arrive there. Um, so yeah, there was no no state variable in it. Uh, I think was what I was trying to say in a very long winded way. Um, but yeah, again, the um, much to my surprise, the dates the First class dates and the flexibility made it useful um, because at the time I was doing some amateur currency trading and I was right. I'd been writing some software in OCaml originally to to process, do some data analysis on a few gigabytes of financial market data, uh, and um, I'd run into a serious problem because OCaml's ha OCaml tried to do clever things with handling daylight saving time automatically. And that had nearly cost me a significant amount of money. Um, and so I ended up using Cantilever instead because I, I could guarantee exactly what its, what its date handling behavior was when given a list of UTC times. Um, so yeah, that turned out um, that turned out to be useful as well, and you know, so far so good. Two languages implemented, both of them having some real world use, uh, and then I started experimenting, and things started to go downhill. So uh, first of all, I I started experimenting with different threading models. I tried. Um, uh, direct threaded, subroutine threaded code, as, uh, token threaded code, as well as um, uh, as well as the original indirect threaded. Uh, I looked at different implementations of Next for different types of um, different types of threading model. I looked at different dictionary representations. Uh, and for each of these, I was writing, there's a small selection being shown here, but for each of these, I was writing myself a new fourth, basically. Um, you'll note here, uh, if I can find it, yeah, here we have the the old school three, um, three plus one tokens for, um, uh, uh, for the representation of a name in the dictionary, which I think is, is that a fourth seventy-seven thing? Um, so yeah, I um, I abandoned that quite quickly because it has its limitations, but they worked surprisingly well. Um, and as I got deeper down this rabbit hole, uh, I started experiment. Having discovered color fourth, uh, I started experimenting with alternatives to ASCII for the source code. Um, and um, and yeah, I started to get a bit obsessed, um, aiming for kind of in more and more getting more and more minimalistic in my uh, in my implementations. So fewer machine instructions, as you can see with the uh, STTW at the top here, um, eliminating immediate words to simplify the uh, the language implementation, uh, as with this rather obscure question mark zero conditional. Uh, operator, which requires, uh, it's just compiled as a normal fourth word and conditionally skips the following instruction. Um, uh, then I looked at how few coded words I could get away with. So, you know, can we implement um, dup, drop using more basic primitives? And the answer is yes, but in all of these cases, it's all, the answer is also, it, it's, it's typically not a good idea. Um, but yeah, it, it gradually my solution to every problem I was faced with uh, became let's write a fourth. Um, and um, so you know, complex uh, web browsers too complex, failing to compile one. Let's write a fourth. Um, 
uh, frustrated with the direction operating system um, design has taken, write a fourth. Uh, discover that the Atom editor built on top of Chromium browser is, um, yeah, it's what, six gig of source code for a programmer's editor. That, that, I think that's a reason to write a fourth. Um, and I, I real, started to realize that every time I got angry about something, I'd start writing a fourth, uh, which is not a healthy thing to do. Um, it's it, it, my, my kind of fourth writing was becoming kind of addictive at this stage. I, I started to realize I had a problem. Um, and so um, I, I, over time, I've managed to rein it in. I've um, and um, the, the time I spent down down this kind of dark rabbit hole, um, habitually implementing fourth implementations, and uh, I've you, you're only seeing a small fraction of them in these slides. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've skipped over the when I discovered. Uh, what was his name? La, uh, Lafar Stewart's uh, Lafourth. Um, it has a completely different syntax uh, and set of looping and conditional operators. And so I, I have several thoughts I wrote with those. And yeah, it, did, it all got quite excessive. But but I started to rein it in, rein it in, and started to to kind of make peace with fourth and. And gradually, I managed to pull things together. So, for example, from what I'd learned by my rage coding of the um, uh, of wide from the previous slide, the uh, the, the miniature IDE, uh, it it helped me. It taught me to write very compact um, compilers uh, for uh, native code compilers. So um, this obviously isn't a full listing of the whole thing but the the the, the 60 is the 60 x86 machine instructions quoted on this slide um, is from a disassembly so you can see as you can see there are macros in there that's with the macros expanded you can write a fourth compiler in 60 machine instructions um, and um, uh, so yeah I, I learned things uh while i was down there uh, that are, some of which are useful and some of which some of which won't be news to many of you but some of which might be uh, might be of interest so so what did i learn while i was while i was walking this path firstly this i, I don't think this will come as a surprise to anyone replacing the lods instruction on x86 x with a separate move from memory and an add is generally a performance increase on my amd laptop over there it's a factor of three performance increase on a on a benchmark that ag aggressively uses the next in an indirect threaded fourth what came as more of a surprise is that you can get the same benefit by using pop in your uh, so popping to eax and then doing the indirect jump on intel will give you uh, roughly um, a 30% speed increase on the on the same benchmark. On AMD, the difference is smaller, but it's still is still significant. So it's more like 10% on uh, on the AMD system I have available. Um, then, um, yeah, you can implement direct threading using RET as your next instruction. I don't recommend it. It's incredibly slow. It's even uh, the, the the with the benchmark I've got. Uh, direct threading on the machines I have available is is already very slow. Um, I think because of the penalty of uh, that. Um, uh, um, oh, who was it talking? Who was it was talking about it yesterday? Um, with the the penalty of mixing um, uh, mixing code and data. Um, but if you want to increase that penalty by something like a factor by about fifty percent, you can use RET as your um, uh, as your um, uh, as your next instruction, uh, and then um, uh, so um, what else do we have? Um, yeah, so 
again, no surprises, binary source code, generally not a great idea. ASCII, ASCII is a standard for a reason, and uh, while, they, while, while there can be good use cases for non, non ASCII source code, yeah, it's generally a good idea. However, uh, having an, uh, most fourth compilers I've seen don't have a, they do a direct translation from source code to uh, executable, whether that's uh, threaded code or native code. Having a binary token intermediate representation does significantly simplify the compiler, however. Um, and this becomes particularly notable if you're bootstrapping your own fourth, because you don't have to implement. Um, it's you, you can read in a stream of 16 or 32 bit tokens much more easily than you can implement word in assembly, for example. Um, uh, and doing a pre processing an ASCII source file into into a binary intermediate representation uh, using uh, an awk script or uh, a, a simple C program is is trivial. Um, uh, next thing I learned was 510 bytes is not enough for a useful fourth system uh, on an x86. Boot, uh, so yeah, putting a, an entire fourth system on an x86 boot sector um, doesn't really fly as far as I can see. Uh, not within the the limits of my programming ability, um, but the the boot the master boot record plus the following sector is, is actually possible. Um, you can write an assembler in fourth using only the C comma uh, word uh, if you enjoy the pain. It's uh, I don't recommend it, but it's it's possible. And I think this was it. Frank Sargent, who did a paper entitled Three Instruction Fourth a very long time ago. Um, this is, I, I guess, this is basically an expression of that, that you can, the three, his three instructions were yeah, read a byte, write a byte, and jump to an address, uh, execute from an address. Um, and essentially, if you're doing, if you're doing a rapid bootstrapping of a fourth system, then that's actually not a bad way to get up and running very quickly. Um, next lesson was that, yeah, you can bootstrap fourth using quite a small subset of fourth. Um, so compile time executable is a nice to have while bootstrapping, but is not necessary. You can, because, for example, if um, if and recurse are um, they, they represent a simple sequence of instructions. So a dumb script can do the substitutions with a special case for the for the names of the functions, and you can bring up your fourth that then gives you the full generality and ability to redefine your your conditionals as you want um, using that. Um, we then have, um, yeah, you can bring up a fourth system in one day. Uh, all very rudimentary, but one that's sufficiently, um, sufficiently functional, uh, sufficiently functional that you can then continue to extend it largely in fourth, um, and um, and then worry about the optimization later. Uh, and I think this is my final point, that GNU Assembler isn't as bad as you think it is, that um, uh, it's it's as quirky as hell, and it's definitely not Microsoft Assembler, but I haven't yet found something I needed to do that I wasn't able to do in it. So if anyone's got any uh, got any edge cases you want to throw at me, then, then uh, I, I suspect I may get some challenging questions here. Um, oh, no, there's one more. Uh, yeah, ra rage programming is rarely productive. So writing a writing a fourth implementation because you're angry about something that rarely leads to anything. So the question is, um, where next? How about me automating my hobby uh, rather than writing hundreds of different fourth interpreters? Actually, I haven't written a hundred yet, but uh, I'm getting close. Um, how about a piece of software that generates um, fourth interpreters um, with uh, by 
yeah, by accepting via command line uh, command line arguments. Um, I, I, this is a work in progress. It's um, the current state of play is I've got a, a fairly basic indirect threaded ANSI forth uh, bootstrapped, and I'm currently in the process of factoring out all of the uh, all of the um, stuff that's dependent on the dictionary implementation, the threading model, um, and um, yeah. So ask me, uh, watch this space, and ask me again next year how it's going because. Uh, um, yeah, that's my current project. And uh, so, uh, yeah, comments, questions. Thank you. So, any questions? <laughs> yeah, I find this very interesting um, for multiple things. One, um, starting with the uh um mention of joy and and quotations uh one of the things that i think that uh that fourth needs is clean quotations where yeah and and um apparently the way you've implemented and i don't know J jones fourth um uh but that looks like a very clean way so that because one of the things is Cozy is a totally notebook environment. So I'm writing down lines and executing them all the time. And I just want to go and put, you know, turn them into a function um, without, without any changes. And I think uh, bracket, quote bracket is one of the words that needs to be state smart. So you got a quote, it's a quote. Um, but in any case, beyond that, um, yeah, clean, clean quotations. But one of the things I want to go and emphasize, co cozy is a vocabulary in fourth. And, and so whatever fourth you've got, here's this vocabulary and you can suck out the, the core of it, which is um, essentially, well, it's very much evolved from Arthur Whitney's K. Um, and um, uh, so it's list of lists. Uh, they just have a, a, a three cell header type count and then reference count, which handles the dynamic allocation and freeing. Um, and um, so again, it, it gives you this, this very high level language to do whatever that big stuff is. But I'll tell you one of the things that was very uh, impressive in, in the last talk was dealing with the hardware end of the of the of of cam of of movement of the camera of, of your um, telescope and so forth. Man, that's the that's the fourth end of things. But then going and doing something like essentially image matching a couple of sets of star maps to go and align your telescope exactly. That's so anyway, I found this very, very interesting talk, and, and we need to chat. <laughs> Is there any list, by the way, of, of people's contact information? Um, so going back to the point you made about quotations, um, the yeah, the this is these are not standard fourth. Brackets. This is a uh, this is a um, uh, an anonymous function. Uh, the actual implementation under the hood is not actually that clean, even though syn syntactically it, it it looks nice. Uh, essentially, this is implemented in much the same way as an inline string would be in uh, uh, in typical fourth. So it it pushes its own address and then skips over a block of code to the to the scanning instruction. So um, I do I did have a uh, an implementation of a more complex compiler which could handle nested definitions uh, without having to do that. But that never, I never really, the, I think the implementation, the idea is sound, but I never really like took the implementation to fruition. But essentially it involves compiling code backwards and then moving it to into the dictionary. Um, oh, the one um, other comment that I, uh, that's really quite important is actually the quotations be recursive 
and that's one of the things that 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 uh, is a problem with the Riva Fourth that, that Cozy's been built in for historical yeah. reasons, uh, and it, they, they're not recursive, and that uh, makes because uh, one of the most fundamental aspects of APL is that is as something that is so trivial in fourth compared to what it's done in, in APLs is that the 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 the, the, the the tick, the quote, which returns the XT of an object. So you can essentially have a verb and have that be passed as, a, as an argument to what an APL would be called an a operator or an adverb. So you can say, do this on each of these items and so forth. But then you want to be able to nest those. And currently, uh, Reeve is not recursive. And so in at that level, and mm -hmm. and so that's something I think maybe you also have handled. Yes, yes. So uh, this kind of thing where you have yeah quotations nested within quotations. Uh, um, yeah. So our next question okay. is by Gerald Wodney. Okay, thank you for this very entertaining talk. Um, can you tell me something more about how the anonymous code memory where you did not have an interpreter but compiled everything uh, coming back now that you have implemented over 104 systems I, s I found this idea intriguing but do you still do that I think this is intriguing uh, I um I, I it's been a long time since I did it because it's actually certainly the implementation in cantilever is actually quite complex hmm. um, so each um, each defining word, is, um, each defining word that changes that, that would change the every word that would change the state variable in uh, in a regular fourth uh, has to be aware of whether you're execute whether you're compiling into um, and the anonymous code buffer or oh. into the dictionary. So you're not saving um, complexity necessarily. So yeah, certainly the implementation in Cantilever doesn't. Uh, it would be an interesting idea to come back to though with um, what eight years more experience though, because uh, there may there's probably a more elegant way of implementing it. Next question is by Stephen Peltz. Um, it's become a double question because the your comments on compile only fourths. Um, compile only fourths are a topic that, raise, that reoccur every 10 years or so, and somebody always gets terribly enthusiastic about them. Um, the person I think who put most effort into it was Christoph Lavaran, um, whose fourth is available um, somewhere out in, in the net. The, the other comment I'd like to say is, is your, your storage of intermediate, uh, basically. Um, both i fourth and VFX do that as part of their optimizations. As one of, as, as one of them. And it actually is a very valuable technique. So, so well done for finding it. Um, I have to say that I, I was trying to think how many fourths I've actually implemented in my life in, in terms of changing models and the like. And I, and I think, I think in, in 40 years, I've actually done three, perhaps four. So you're well ahead of us. Um, yeah, not in terms of usefulness. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, yeah, but it, it is a hit. I mean, it's it, it's something that I know I have to. I actually have to grab, take my hand and smack it occasionally because it, it's terribly implementing. Because fourth is so easy to implement. Yeah, it's hypnotic. It's, yeah. it is a drug, mm -hmm. and, and you can give <laughs> into it far too easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, very so, much so. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yep. Next question by Ulrich Hoffmann. Yeah, uh, that is actually not a question, a remark. Uh, in uh, Seedforce, uh, we uh, managed uh, immediate words in a way that uh, there's uh, bracket open, a special case, 
Uh, we have an interpreter and a compiler, and if you hit the bracket open in compile mode, it drops out of the compile loop into the interpret loop. And then all the immediate words are actually macros that do bracket open, go to interpret mode, do whatever is necessary to do, uh, calculate branch uh, offsets or whatever, compile some stuff, and then go back to compile mode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and my... Then... my... My my own point with this was um, more that I was uh, bootstrapping my early for no but wherever in this list the uh, the implementation is but uh, I was I was bootstrapping my fourths using uh, simpler external software rather than a fourth interpreter so seed seed fourth is very elegant I I I looked at it. Um, uh, looked at it along the way, and I I really like the way uh, really like the way that's done. But um, yeah, but, but yeah, uh, the, yeah. The, so we have also binary source code, uh, but yeah. uh, you don't need to have this. Uh, you could also do this on a text level, where then the uh, the immediate word would expand to a sequence of uh, words, bracket open, whatever is necessary, bracket close. That that, yeah. that would work as well. So as if you write it in in the source code. And you go to interpret mode, you do whatever is necessary, compile uh, branch, compile, yep. calculate the branch address, compile the, the branch address, and then go back to compile mode to continue. So that's yep. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, uh, final question by Andrew Reed. No, not final. Oh. Well, uh, we are basically now into. Uh, bio break mode. So, let's have Thanks. first Andrew Reed and a short one by Bill Stoddard. Doing a great talk and good to see you still wearing a shirt on your back after that computer bug in the currency markets. Um, question: All the, all this is um, I eighty six assembler. Have you ever been tempted to get involved in bringing up fourths on? Uh, small microcontrollers or, or sim sim similar uh, CPUs and boards? Um, I've got, uh, I have an Arduino uh, lying around somewhere and it's on it's on the project list, but but yeah, it, it's not something I've got around to yet. So, so particularly the, the, the low end microcontrollers, ARM I think is probably going to be before, um, uh, before um, the, the kind of really low end uh, microcontroller stuff. Thank you. Hoping we can interest you in doing that. There are lots of good boards out there that need a fourth. And it sounds like if you want to hit, you know, a hundred, you know, before the end of the year, perhaps you should take some of them on. I, the, 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 that might be a good, uh, good target for the parameterized uh, fourth <laughs> generator. <laughs> so quick question by Bill Stoddard. I'll, I'll just make you a comment. Christoph Lavaren showed us his uh, totally compiled fourth. And Andrew once gave a talk called Why State is Evil. It, state introduces a fundamental dishonesty into fourth. We, we, we kind of have state smart words which pretend that state, that fourth isn't so sort of state dependent. We've really got two different languages that we're trying to roll into one by methods that just don't work, that break down at some stage. So it's it, we, we've, it's never been fully investigated. And, and uh, of course, we've got years and years of experience of coping with fourth. But I think that a totally compiled fourth is a really intriguing project that uh, would be great to look at in greater depth. Uh, well, Cantilever is on, I didn't actually put a link to my GitHub here, but Cantilever is on GitHub. So if you want to look at the implementation, um, I'm not promising it's readable. I'm not promising it's good code, but um, but it's there. So. Thank you.